How you doing, everybody? Uh, welcome to Azu Anti Cheat version 4.0.0 setup. I'm going to do this video in two parts, but all in one video. I'm going to start with the veterans. I'm going to go over some of the things that you need to know, things that have changed, and uh, kind of general setup uh, for a few things. So, second portion is going to be for newbies. Anybody that's brand new to the mod, brand new to downloading it and setting up. Um, so I will show all of that. I'll show my recommendations and I'll kind of go more in depth. So you'll find the timestamp for when the newbie section starts down below in the comments and in the description. So keep that in mind, but we're going to start first with veterans. So if you're a veteran, tune in, listen, here's, here's some of the things that have changed. So for simplicity, my config folder on my server is fairly empty. The only thing that I have is in Bepinex plugins, I have the anti-cheat already installed and put here. Uh, if you notice, I'm missing the Thunderstore files. That's because we're in a test version, so you don't have the icon PNG or the readme.md files. These three files and these three languages have already been provided for you for the new localization. Uh, if you need to add any additional, just mimic this format here and create a new one and then change the value in the configuration. I will show you exactly where that is when we get to that file. So make sure it's on your server. Again, make sure it's on your client. This is required on both server and client side for all clients, okay? So we're gonna boot up my server. I'm gonna show you the new files that generate in the config folder here. So we are going to reconnect. If you notice, we have quite a few new files, all right? so. First things first, we're going to jump into this file here and these other two for a quick brief update that they are all now prefixed with azumat dot to go more in line with all of my other mods. Uh, so you'll find these three with a prefix of my name. OK, this file here, the azu anti cheat dot CFG, I do recommend that you completely regenerate this for this version. These other two, the formats did not change. All you have to do is rename them so you can do that ahead of time before you do an update. If you go into the CFG file, one of the major things that you'll notice here and what I was talking about with those localization files is that there is a new configuration option. This new configuration option has the ability to choose any language that Valheim supports and be able to localize. Though you do need the localized file with keys and values found anywhere in the plugins folder. I do give you the English, German, and um, Russian files found in the plugins. So you can use those as templates, let you know kind of how to set them up. All right. I do recommend that you use the English as a template. I give some details here for YML or JSON. It can be either one, but make sure it is azu anti cheat dot language. So language just means whatever language you choose here. Uh, changing this language does require a reboot of the server because it loads one time. So the limits and the keys here, these change. That's why I recommend regenerating this file. Uh, these changed from one dash general now has two more additional options inside of it. And then this used to be three dash limits. It is now two dash limits because I consolidated. So make sure you regenerate that file. I will quickly go over even for you super cool veterans, uh, the webhook file here, because a lot of you still ask me day to day about how to set this up and still don't have it set up. So first things first, I'm just going to kind of go over these instructions without actually saying the instructions. Highlight and copy and copy this here. Paste it to a new line. Delete the pound signs. This here can be labeled whatever you want. Either your server, the channel that it's being sent to, something that is a unique identifier. You can have multiple of these, so you can go on a new line. Make sure you delete and keep the indentation the same and then paste. Okay, so you can have multiple. Um, the indentation does need to be the same as what the indentation is here. Hook cannot change. So I can call this my cool server, but I cannot change this. Make sure that that stays as hook. As you can see, I say make sure it remains the same. Setting up a Discord webhook is as simple as right-clicking on your server, going to server settings, 
clicking integrations, webhooks, generate a new webhook. And once you've done that, you'll be able to specify the name of it and where what channel it outputs to. You'll copy that URL and then you'll paste it right here. OK, so it's that simple. That's all you have to do. Make sure you save the file after any kind of change that you set up and accomplish. So I'm going to save mine with none in there for the time being. Moderator list, I'm not going to go over that. Hopefully by now you know what that is. The whitelist, we're going to talk about these two files here, the whitelist and the gray list. These used to be files. They used to require you to boot up your client and copy from mymods.yaml to the server and split it out and do all this convoluted stuff. Now, all you have to do to set up your whitelist is drag your mod to the server. So I obviously need to whitelist my anti-cheat. Uh, it does this to guarantee that you're using the version that you specify. I do not want to do this internally specifically for that reason. So it can be inside of a folder. It's only going to look at DLLs and only if they are a DLL and they are active inside of this folder. Gray list works the exact same way. I'm going to use easy spawner here because this has a few things that you need to note. One, it's in a folder, which normally wouldn't matter. In this case, it matters because it's called .old. Even though I have the folder in my gray list, this is not an actual DLL. This is a .old or a disabled plugin that comes from R2 Modman, okay? Or that you chose to call .old. So this will not load on the gray list. It will not find it. Make sure that you are aware of that. So if you have any mods disabled, they will not load on the gray list. Um, also, few people that have Windows servers, I'm able to just drag, go here, and then say replace, even while the server is on. See, it's going to ask me to overwrite every single one of those files. My server is on, as you can tell here. It's online. If you are hosting your server locally for yourself on a Windows machine or a slightly more locked down Linux box, you might have some file errors and file transfer issues. Uh, you can update this live. So as you can tell, when I updated that now, I'm just going to refresh this log. I updated those and on my server, I get two success messages. Um, if you don't get the success, success messages, then something went wrong. Make sure that you just turn off your server, drag and drop your files uh, and do what you need to do to set those up. If you are dragging more than like four or five or six files, I do recommend that your server is off. So it checks this folder about every 15 seconds. If it takes longer than that for you to upload, sometimes it can cause a IO error or a um, file read issue that might cause this to fail. So keep that in mind. I do, do have some checks in place that hopefully will prevent that, but keep that in mind. Make sure that you set this up uh, with your server off. It'll take you way less time than it used to because all you have to do is drag and drop. Uh, please read the frequently asked questions that are in this particular version's change logs. Uh, I've already answered a lot that you might have some questions off the top of your head. So without further ado, I will go to the newbies. Uh, I think that the veterans are A-OK. -okay. Just make sure that you rename all your files, make sure they all have the prefixes and set up your whitelist and graylist. The old whitelist and graylist files are no longer needed. So veterans, hopefully we're all squared away. Join my Discord if you have any questions. Moving on to the newbies. Newbies, where, where can you get this mod? What can you do to install it? Where does it need to go? What do I need? I'm gonna show you all of that I will also recommend that you look at my R2 Modman video because I will be recommending that mod manager. So on valheim.thunderstore.io, you can go to thunderstore.io and then click communities and then go to Valheim if you need to find it. You can search as you anti cheat here and it will take you to that mod page and you can click it. My recommendation on the home page here is that you have R2 Modman as a mod manager. It will help you out tremendously on the client side. And then all you have to do is if point your FTP to whatever your client side folder is for that R2 Modman profile, and then just copy and paste things to the server. All you need to do is copy the plugins and potentially the configs, but nothing more. So 
you can go to Azure Anti Cheat, type that in, go to the mod page. Uh, right here is going to be any kind of dependency if you were going to make a mod pack. Uh, notice that there's 132 other people that have used this. Use them as an example. They will teach you how to set this up. If you have the mod manager already installed, you can click install with mod manager here. Uh, if you're having issues with that, you can scroll down to the very specific version and then click install here. So the live version currently is 3.0. Today we're learning about the brand new unreleased 4.0 version. Make sure that you do have Dickinson's um, Bepinex pack for Valheim. This is required for it to load. This video is going to be dropped right here in place of this old one. Change logs will always be listed inside of here, so you can make sure you read all of these. I do recommend that you read some of the old ones if you have time, just so you know what's changed, why, and some things that have been issues in the past. Um, scrolling down, you need to have this installed on the server and on the client. And again, it's all clients and the server. Uh, this readme will change in format a little bit. Um, so just make sure that you join my Discord if you have any questions or you need any assistance. Once you have that mod installed on your client, it should come in a folder similar to azimat slash azuanticheat here. And then a DLL, it'll have these three files. And it'll have an icon and a readme file in here as well when it's fully released. You can FTP this directly to your server. So inside of the Azure Anti Cheat whitelist folder or the graylist folder that generate after the server boots with the mod loaded, you're going to drag any mods that you want to enforce or have required for the client into the whitelist. So the whitelist itself is going to have any DLL that you wish. It can be in folders. It does not matter. Graylist will be set up the exact same way. I use this for the veterans to show them that uh, Cooley Easy Spawner is in a folder, but the DLL is DLL.old. Anything that's labeled .old will not load. It must be a .dll. Um, any other files does not matter if they're in there. It's only going to look at DLL files. So with this version, all of the uh, previous files that have been named as anti cheat underscore webhook are now prefixed with my name to be in correspondence and reflection of my other mods of which I do the exact same. This file here is brand new to the 4.0 version only because even veterans need to regenerate this. So make sure that this is a brand new file and you're not copying this from a 3.0 version or anything like that. I've changed a lot of the keys. I've changed a lot of like the order. Uh, make sure that you put these values however you need. Uh, don't put decimals. So you can't do a dot zero zero here. You can't do an F. You can't do anything of that nature. Make sure they are integers. So whole numbers only. Um, the Discord output, this is where you would specify your language. If you do not speak English natively, you can change this to whatever uh, language that you want, but you do need to update the file on the server in order to specify that. So by default, I give you German, I give you Russian, and I give you English. Uh, if anybody gives me more translations and is willing to translate more of these languages, please provide that to me in my Discord, and I will update that in a new release. So. Changing the language here, uh, unlike everything else, um, if you change the values for the health, etc., all of those live update to all the clients. This is the only one that will not. This requires a full server reboot. Um, this will be for your Discord output to localize this to whatever language you wish. Follow the instructions here. Again, join my Discord. My Discord link is here if you have any questions or need any assistance setting this up. So, the files that you can use to localize this can be anywhere inside the Bepinex folder. By default, I'm going to provide these inside of the Azure Anti Cheat uh, plugins folder where the plugin is going to be located. Follow the form, the naming format here. So if your language is German or Russian, obviously it's dot Russian or dot German. Um, if you need to create a new one, I recommend using the English as a template and set this up for your new language. Call it azuantichete.swedish.yml or .json uh, as the configuration option suggests. We accept both. So the configurations here, we'll go over the moderator list. 
Moderator list is based on a Steam ID, so this is usually a 765611 number. Uh, this will be for any moderators. Moderators by default bypass all plugins if they have additional plugins, but they must have everything that is required on the whitelist, okay? Even if a mod is graylisted, if it version checks with itself, the anti-cheat doesn't care. It's going to kick them because that mod says it should kick them. So change these to true or false, depending on what your moderator wants to do. Uh, they are required to have everything on the whitelist, despite uh, being able to bypass DLLs. And then this right here is any extra specific permissions uh, that you might want to give them. If you need to set up someone brand new, let's say you have more than one moderator, you just copy all this, go to a new line, and paste it. Make sure the indentation is the exact same. And then you can label a whole brand new number here. You can just type it in. That's their new Steam ID, etc. Change these true and false, and you're done. Make sure you just read the instructions. Follow the instructions, and you should be good to go on everything. Um... Saving all these files is a live save, so if you update these and get these set up, um, they should live update on your server. You don't have to do a server reboot unless you're doing a massive upload of whitelist files or graylist files, or you have changed your localization language. So all of these will live update to all the clients. Um, in the webhook, make sure that you set this up by following the example creating a new Discord webhook for yourself, pasting it in here, and changing the name only when you wish to change the name. Delete the pound signs, as the instructions say. Keep the hook word the same. You cannot change that. But you can label this my cool server or anything that is distinctive for this particular webhook here. So save that file. You'll have that all set up on your server. And you're pretty much good to go. Uh, any mods that you want to enforce on the client as a reiteration, go on the whitelist. If you want them to be able to choose to have it on their client without getting kicked, if it does not version check with itself, you can put it on the gray list here. Um, one of the major frequent asked questions for newbies is, why is this in the config folder and not the plugins folder? And the reason being is anything inside the plugins folder, so the Bepinex plugins here, it will load on the server. Not all mods are required to load on the server, and some, if they do, will mess up your server. So hopefully that covers just about everything that you need to know about the anti-cheat. If you guys have any questions at all, please let me know. Um, some of the additional output that you'll notice is that when you localize it to German, you will get German output here. If you need to jump to that person's Steam ID, um, profile, it will take you here just by clicking their name. You can see that this is outputting the Steam ID, this is player name, this is the server, this is the player world, uh, location if it's available, and this person, in, in case you guys can't read this, this person was kicked for uh, Valheim Quality of Life, in this case this person is me during testing. Um, most of the time you'll be able to see this in different formats, so this is version 4.0, uh, this person got kicked for Jotun and Spawn That. This is in English, so keep that in mind. You can localize that however you wish. The output has changed. If you need to jump to the mod page at all, you can just click this and jump right to the mod page and scroll down. Make sure you read the change logs. Change logs are very, 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 very important for this mod because any change I make could potentially cause a bunch of your players not to be able to get into the server. Um, I don't plan on changing the file names or anything like that in the future. Uh, I think this is kind of like the final. So hopefully that covers everything, guys. I'll see you in the next video.